across the burning languor of the soil faced summer with his form a violent and stamped his tyranny of torrid light and the blue seal of a great burning sky. Rain tide burst in upon torn wings of heat, startled with lightning, as unquiet dogs left with life giving stream. The torpid soil, overcast with flare and sound and storm winged dark, the star defended dawn of heaven's dim sleep, or from the gold eye of her power covered with backed cloud veils the earth's brown face. Earth's mood now changed. She lay in lulled repose. The hours went by with slow, contented train. A wide and tranquil air remembered peace. Earth was the comrade of the happy sun. Three thoughtful seasons passed with shining thread and scanning one by one the pregnant hours watched for a flame that lurked in luminous depths, a vision of some mighty birth to come. Autumn led in the glory of her moon and dreamed in the splendor of her lotus pool. And winter and new time 
Let their calm, cool hands on nature's bosom still in a half sleep and deepened with hues of lex and mellow ease the tranquil beauty of the waning year. Then spring, an ardent lover, leaped through leaves and caught the earth bride in his eager clasp. His advent was a fire of erased hue. His arms were a circle of the arrival of joy. In this high signal moment of the gods, answering earth's yearning and her cry for bliss, a greatness from our other countries came, a spirit of its celestial of source uh, were descended into earth in perfect mode and wept not fallen to mortality but looked on all with large and tranquil eyes. outlined by the pressure of this new descent, a lovelier body formed than us had known, as yet a prophecy only a hint. The glowing of of a charmed, unseen hole. It came into the sky of mortal life, bright like the crescent horn of a gold moon, returning in a faint illumination. But soon the link of soul with form grew sure. Flooded was the dim cave with slow conscious light. The seed grew 
into a delicate, marvelous bud. The bud disclosed a great and heavenly bloom. At once she seemed to found a mighty race. Her nature dwelt in a strong separate air. Like a strange bird with large, rich, colored breast that sojourns on a secret fruited bow, lost in the emerald glory of the wood. Or flies above divine, unreachable tops. An image made of heaven's transparent light. Its charm recalled things seen in visions hour. A golden bridge spanning a fairy flood. A moon-touched palm tree single by a lake. Companion of the wide and glimmering peace. A murmur as of leaves in paradise. Moving when feet of the immortal pass. A fiery hello. Over sleeping hills, a strange and starry head alone in night. Seemed a dream 
of the divine and beauty and grace and grandeur had their home. Harbor the childhood of the incarnate flame. Intense philosophy pointed earth to heaven, sculpture and painting concentrated sense upon an inner vision's motionless world. The architecture of the infinite discovered here its inward musing shapes captured into wide voice of soaring stone. Music brought down celestial yearning song held the merged heart absorbed in rapturous death. The world interpreting movements of the dawn molded idea and mood to rhythmic sway. And yet, too great, holy to know. She walked their front towards the greater light. Their leader and queen over their hearts and souls. One close to their bosom yet divine and far. They were moved by her towards great unknown things. Some turned to her against their nature's bent, divided between wonder and revolt, impatient subject their tired longing hearts, hugging the bonds close of which they most complained, murmured at a yoke they would have wept to lose, the splendid yoke of her beauty and her love. The force in her drew a subhuman boom, and to her spirit's large and free delight, 
she joined the ardent showed magnificent lives of animals and bird and flower and tree. They answered to her with a simple heart. A key to a light still kept in being score. The sun word of an ancient mystery saint. Her name ran murmuring on the lips of men. No equal heart came close to join her heart, midst those encircling lives her spirit dwelt apart in her sin until her hour of faith. A morn that seemed a new creation's front, bringing a greater sunlight, happier skies came, burdened with a beauty moved and strange, out of the changeless origin of things. King Aswapati listened through the rain to other sounds than meet the sense-formed ear. The voice withdrew into its hidden sky, but like a shining answer from the gods, approached through sun bright spaces, Savitri. An impromptu from the deeper sight within, thoughts rose in him that knew not their own scope. Then to those large and brooding depths whence love regarded him. 
across the straits of man. He spoke in sentences from the unseen hut. Accustomed scenes were now an ended play, moving in muse amid familiar power, touched by new magnitudes and fairy sights. She turned to vastnesses not yet her home, allured her heart from the unknown sweetness. The secrets of an unseen world well closed. When the pale dawn slipped through night's shadowing God. Vainly the newborn light desired her face. The palace woke to its own emptiness. The sovereign of its daily joys was far. Her moonbeam feet tinged not the loosened floor. The beauty and divinity were gone. The light had fled to search the spacious world. The world ways opened before Savitri, a guidance turned the dumb revolving wheels, and in the eager body of their speed, the dim mast hooded godhead rose who moves assigned to man immutably from his birth, receivers of the inner and outer law, at once the agents of his spirit's will and witnesses and executor of his fate.
often from a gilded dusk to argent dawn where jewel lamps flickered on frescoed walls and the stone lattice stared at moonlight bells half conscious of the tardy listening night dimly she glided between banks of sleep at rest in the slumbering palaces of king Hamlet and village saw the fate of Anne's past, home of a life bent to the soil it plowed. For sustenance of its short and passing days, that transient keep their hold of a petite course and changing in the circle of a sky which alters not above our mortal toil. Away from this sinking creature's burden dower to free and griefless spaces now she turns. Here was the childhood of primeval earth. Imperial acres of the eternal sower, and wind-stirred grasslands winking in the sun, or mid green musing of wood and rough brow. In the groves, murmurous bee air, humming wild, all past the long, leaping voice of silver flood, like a swift hope. Journeying among its dreams, hasten the chariot of the golden bride. The bosom of our mother. Kept for us still her austere region and her musing depths, her impersonal reaches, lonely and inspired, and the mountainesses of her rapturous home. August, exulting in her maker's eye, she felt her nearness 
Gehen in Erz brecht, converst still with a light behind the veil, still commune with eternity beyond. The seers attuned to the universal will, content in him who smiles behind earth's form, abode ungrieved by the insistent days. About them like green trees, girdling a hill, young grave disciples fashioned by their touch, strained to this simple act and conscious. Word, greatened within, and go to meet their height. Amen. 